literally, and then and then you you turned around and said something. Dave panned the SLS your way, and there was something standing right there beside you. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, there's fella to get. Oh, cat ball. Look, 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 look. Right on the window. Is that the window that he jumped? From? Yes. Yeah. This is pediatric. That's, that's the where third. He jumped. Is there anything you want to say before we leave? We're going to end this session here. So long. Tonight, our paranormal quest has brought us here to Williamson, West Virginia, to the old hospital on College Hill. This hospital served the community for nearly 100 years, and there is no question the many people who lost their lives within the building and the many lives that began have left their mark within its many halls. Visitors to this hospital nowadays and the staff of the building have reported many times coming into contact with those spirits who still linger. Tonight, we are going to be one of the first groups granted exclusive access to spend the night within this old haunted and historic hospital. Tanya, here we are. We are in the old hospital on College Hill. Yes, you are. <laughs> what can you tell me about this amazing building? Well, she opened her doors on March the 2nd of 1928. So she just turned 93 years old. Um, we're actually here on the fourth floor. Um, the room behind you served as the pharmacy room. Uh, a lot of people said that was kind of haunted and a lot of spookiness going on. They didn't want to stay here after hours. Um, even like janitorial staff refused to work this floor. And then on the other end was the surgery. So you could see where they would come and watch. Oh, wow, okay. And kind of train. The other stories that we thought was kind of odd, because in the 20s and 30s, you know, they did things a lot different than we do now. Uh, they would also let your loved ones come in here and watch while the surgery was being performed. So it wasn't uncommon to see, you know, doc nurses and loved ones in the same room watching some person getting operated on. As mayor, I can deem a lot of things, but I can't determine when a place is haunted or not. Um, I've had my own experiences here because of uh, helping Sabrina, my wife. There's been a couple of occasions that I've been here that, uh, let's just say I've heard noises that are beyond what well, a building as old as this is, isn't just settling and noises that you would you know, attribute to an old building. It, it is concerning. Well, actually I was outside on the corner here uh, working on a window. Uh, that had had some problems and uh, the sounds were above me so it would be to the second floor northeast corner of this building and uh, it was uh, very clearly voices but uh, i was totally working by myself and looked around and there was no one near me at the time back in the 20s she was a state-of-the-art hospital i mean she was um it costs, I think, there's an article on the first floor in the cabinet. I think she costs around $175,000 to build. Wow. And, um, you know, back then in the 20s, that was a lot of money. So she was a state of the art hospital and she had 72 beds. So it was pretty amazing to have that. And she serviced, we're on the border of Kentucky, not too far from Virginia. So she serviced a lot of different places other than West Virginia. So there was a lot. And as you can imagine, a hospital this old, you know, Bill in the 20s, she went through the Great Depression. Um, and then if you realize what part of West Virginia you're in, very um, rural, you got the Hatfield McCoy feuds, you got the Mate One Massacre, a lot of feuds, a lot of murders. Um, we're located in Mingo County, West Virginia. So if you actually Google Mingo County, our nickname is called Bloody Mingo because there were so many deaths and so many murders. So this hospital played a role in all of that. Um, one of the stories that kind of stuck out with this floor that some of the other people have picked up on, this is the third floor, was the story of a name of a guy by the name of Mose Blackburn. Um, Mose shot and killed a city police officer back in 1962. Um, when the other officers responded to the call, there was an altercation that occurred and Mose was brought to this hospital and we believe he was in that room right there um, to the hallway, he was the first one on the left. Um, the story goes that he asked the deputy to go to the nurse's station to get him a drink of water. When the deputy left, then Mose takes off running and jumps out that window to try to escape. 
Other stories say that he was thrown out the window. Then there's also stories that, um, that an evil spirit was chasing him and made him jump. The odd thing about Moses' story is that when he jumped, um, he didn't die. They brought him back to the hospital. He was expected to make a full recovery. He died one month later. And when I got a copy of his birth certificate, it said he died from emphysema, a fractured rib, and a broken leg. So it just it didn't make any sense. So um, that's what this floor is mostly noted for. And that's the window that he jumped out, but it was just kind of odd. Uh, a friend of ours was helping me take care of a window because the building has been a uh, subject of so much vandalism, people breaking in. And uh, it was one of those days when we were trying to take care of an, uh, an entry of a window to stop it from being so easily to break into. And it was in the middle of the day, uh, but if you've been in the basement of this building, it's very dark down there. And uh, my friend Wes and I were taking care of that window when uh, we heard a noise, I guess I would attribute it to it sound like a door closing abruptly. Um, there was no wind or anything that would have forced it. Um, he and I both had the same feeling and we wanted to get the heck out of here. <laughs> that was the result. Um, if you watch Destination Fear on the Travel Channel, this is where Dakota slept and had his experience. Um, I think it was around two or three o'clock in the morning, he heard a glass shatter, glass break, and he came to check it out. Of course, it probably freaked him out a little bit, but it was in this room here. And we left the glass for a little while, but then we had to clean it up because we didn't want anybody to step on it. But it's a sound booth room, and if you want to come in and take a look at it, the glass was actually found here. But as you can see, there's no light fixtures or anything like that that would have caused any glass to fall. But it has an old sound booth. You can't lock yourself in or anything like this. You don't see them like this much anymore. But they would test your hearing and things like that. Um, so we're not sure if there's any stories in this room that we need to know about, but this is where he heard the glass shatters. Also had an experience on the second floor, which I'll take you, it was down this way. Um, usually after groups leave, I'll come and do like a, just a clearing of a building just to make sure everybody's out safely and make sure nobody's kind of hiding or anything like that. So um, I was just up here checking all the rooms just like I normally do. And on this end of the hallway, I got to um, this room down here. And as I was passing it, I heard a male's voice go, hey, it just, and I don't scare easily, but it startled me because he was so clear and it sounded like he was right beside of me and I couldn't find him. Personally, I was born here uh, and this building represents, or this hospital represents, uh, like so many things in a community, like a high school. Um, community hospitals are fundamentally all about a community. Um, you know, it's the life and death and the story. Uh, sometimes it's all the tragedies and it also has the wonderful things of all the lives born here too, which you know signals that life should go on. But it's historical too, and uh, we're delving into that as we speak. Uh, you know, we've had coal mining activity has gone on here for all the hundred plus years the town's been here, the hospital's been here. Uh, this hospital has been that place of care for those people because mining was always dangerous, still dangerous, but even more. They should go further back in time. So, you know, it, it, uh, it was a regional influence. It was a place where some of our best and brightest were trained and raised to be care providers. Um, you can't say enough about what a hospital is for a community. It's the glue, I think, that really keeps it together. But this is where, um, and you see the, the kids' border, just the way that it was. It's really heavy down here. Wow, it's heavy. It's a different vibe. You know, every floor to me brings a different vibe, but this one here, it's just a vibe that I can't even, I, I can't even explain. After what, this served as the kitchen and cafeteria part for many years, and then after that, it served as a temporary morgue. Um, I get asked all the time if this hospital had a morgue. It really didn't have what I would call a real morgue, but they would store the bodies here temporarily, and then out this door here, the nurses would come and get them and take them down a path to the nurses' college and temporarily store them into the funeral home and come and pick them up. So it, it was kind of a, what I would say, a temporary morgue. There's a lot of um, activity down here. Um, some of the groups that we've led down here, 
um, believe it or not, um, a lot of them picked up kids' voices. They, um, we had one group that came back here and um, there was a group, we were turning around to come back out and I was at the front and I had a friend that was in the back and one of the women said, stop, I hear a kid. And we stopped and she come back up to the front where I was and she said the kid asked her if she wanted to play. Totally freaked her out. She didn't have it on video or anything, but she, they just heard it. So it's not uncommon to hear, hear kids' voices through this area. You'll hear like unexplained noises as far as, um, you know, feet walking, um, thumps, doors shutting. Like I said, back here was the one room that we had the most trouble with, and it was the x ray room. Room I'm temperature. Getting, I'm getting that audio thing again. I don't know if it's. No, it's not that. I don't know what it is. This is so weird. We have not had as many audio issues as we have here since we came here. It's peculiar, yeah. Like it just, like the audio keeps cutting in and out, is what it sounds like. Like they don't want me to talk. Yeah. Have you ever believed that you've been, during the course of walking, this hospital followed? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, especially when I'm here alone. I'm like, there'll be times I come up here by myself and I'm not alone. <laughs> that so, could be part of it. It could be. Um, one of the other stories that we had, one of our volunteers, you know, she played a nurse basically in the tours. And all she did was dress up as a nurse and she never talked, she never touched anybody. She just walked from room to room. And we had done this for six days, I think. But on the seventh day, it was, she was walking from one room and she was coming out of here. And then all of a sudden she saw a black hole in the wall and a man's face appeared and it freaked her out and she would not come back again, she left. We had that night, we had so many staff leave in tears um, they claimed that different smells, they would smell like ammonia smells and just, they were scared and they didn't come back and we've not seen them since. So, um, you know, the basement, like I said, for some reason just has this vibe about it that I can't really explain. I'm not really sure. Well, Tanya, thank you so much for walking us through the hospital and getting us acquainted with the history and the hauntings. Looks like we got our work cut out for us tonight. Are you guys ready to get started? Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we're getting ready to leave for abandonment here, and we're down in the basement. We're getting ready to set up this camera and then leave the building. We have cameras on the second floor, third floor, and fourth floor as well. We have the trigger REM pods set up here on this IV stand. The trigger REM pod is good to try and see if we can get interaction with objects that the spirits of the locations might be familiar with. So we have this set up making contact with this IV stand over here. And if you watch, all it takes is to get close to the IV stand. The IV stand is now the antenna for right. this REM pod. So it works pretty well. And we have it set up on its side like that. So the camera, when it's set up right over here, it can see the lights really well. So we're really excited about this one. And we're hoping that we get some activity here at the Haunted Hospital on College Hill. Let's get going.
ending. Jason just heard something up here on the third floor when we're tearing down abandonment. Could have swore. Could have swore you guys were up here. No, we went down to the first floor so Dave could use the restroom. From abandonment, and I came up here to get the audio and the cat balls, and I stand right here, and I, I started, I was hearing movement back in here. It sounded like it was back where our cameras are. And I said, Dave, Ryan, and I stood here, didn't hear anything. I'm like, I'm gonna wait. Because I knew y'all wouldn't like, you know, jump out or anything, but I was like, I knew I heard something back here and I thought, I have a feeling it's you all and I don't want to come around the corner and y'all be like right there. Right. Dave, Dave said he was outside. Were yeah, we were both outside. I was standing right here and I, I distinctly heard movement back here. And I could have swore to God it was you all because it came from this direction where our gear is. Well, they already got the camera from up here, didn't you? Yes. This has already been tore down up here. Yeah, I already got the camera from up here. I heard it down here. I mean, it was just like someone, it sounded like you all were picking stuff up, moving stuff around in here. No. That's so weird because when we got back from abandonment, I walked in and I thought that it, it just felt kind of charged in here a little bit. And, and on this floor? Yeah, when I went to break down the stuff from up here. That's ironic. Is there a patient up here with us? I thought I just heard movement back here. That was so strange though. That's... <laughs> I kind was of your audio it. still rolling, Jason, when you no, did? I, I wasn't even rolling at all because I, I was retrieving the audio and ending the sessions. <clears throat> I heard the last little bit because I was back in our gear area trying to mess with stuff or whatever. I can't remember what I was doing. And then he said, yeah, yeah, I heard exactly. wait, 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 wait. What was that? I just heard a moan. Mess with stuff or whatever. I can't remember what I was doing. And then he said, Yeah, yeah I heard exactly. wait, 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 wait. What was that? I just heard a moan. This sounded like someone moaning. If there's anyone here with us and you can hear our voices, we're just here to talk to you. We'd love it if you would come out and speak to us, have a little conversation. Did you hear that? Yeah. Sound like a man's voice. Did you hear that? Yeah. Jason heard you making some noises up here. We set out a couple of items down there with bright lights on them that you can use those to let us know you're here. Whoa. Yeah, right. It felt like a thing of cold air go right by me here. Yeah, there's not, there's not any broken windows. And if it were drafty through here, we would see a lot of dust and pollen floating through the air. Yeah. I could have swore I heard you moving something around. Do you need help finding something? Just fell it again. Cat ball. Look, 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 look. Right on the window. Got it. Good. Dude, I felt something rush right by me. Look at my arms. That's, that's crazy. crazy. Straight straight down. That inmate. It went straight down there. Yeah. It right did. Yeah. Oh way. my God, you got goosebumps look, like crazy. I, I can feel it now. It's getting chills. 
Yeah, the you felt it charge right now. You felt it rush right by you, and then that cat ball in the window down there. Yeah, is that the window that he jumped? From? Yes. Yeah, this is pediatric. That's, That's the where third. He jumped. When the deputy left, then Moe takes off running and jumps out that window to try to escape. What if that was a residual of him running and jumping out the window? It is charged right now. It is. Did you see that flashing when you moved by the window? Can you make it flash again? We felt you go right through here. We could feel your energy. That was super strange. That was that weird. Was, was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was very, very strange. Thank goodness that you missed that one in the windowsill. Yeah. I didn't even realize you put that one in the windowsill or else I would have picked it up too whenever I was picking up all the abandonment stuff and it just so happened that, you know, that's why I haven't been filming down this way because I didn't even realize that was there. That rush of cold air went right by you. And then as soon as that rush of cold air went by you, that cat ball... Yeah. You know, within maybe like five seconds, that cat ball, like enough time that if someone was running at full speed, they'd make it to that window. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Just fell out of Look, cat ball. Look, 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 look. Right on the window. Now, here's what I wonder. And this is a stretch. Earlier, I was hearing the noises down here. Mm -hmm. I just swore. There's a hallway right there. If they wanted to get by us without coming down that hallway, he or she would have came through here, went right by you when you felt it, and then went straight down there. Oh, yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Because we kind of had them cornered over here if they're back in here where I heard them. Yeah. Maybe that's what the charge of energy was. It was just getting ready to make right its... by you. Make its... I don't know. Move. That was... Very strange. I don't have much battery life left on this eight minutes. I got three out of four on mine. If you want to run and get a different one, battery for it. Absolutely. You want to film on this for a second, Dave, while I run and get yeah. a new battery? Mm -hmm. Here, I'm going to go up four, four, get my recorder. Hello? one to die yeah mo i'm sorry if uh, i'm shortening your name there but if you're up here with us cover down here we would love it if you would come and talk to us what was it that made you jump out that window can you tell us Did you do something bad? We're gonna be here all night with you. And later on, we're gonna bring more stuff up that's gonna make it easier for us to talk to you. But if you could, could you just walk down this hallway for us? We're not trying to block you in. We will let you go by. But if you walk down this hallway, it'll let us know that you're here with us. But if you could, could you just walk down this hallway for us? We're not trying to block you in. We will let you go by. Do you have to relive this moment of your life running and jumping out the window? Or do you do it whenever you want to? Are you, I mean, are you forced to? people earlier this evening that was looking at the hospital in here, walking through, said they seen you. We'd love to see you walk across the hall there for us, if you could and would for us.
Is there someone here on this floor that would like to come and speak with us? You guys want to grab the SLS? Yeah. Get some of the other equipment ready and then really hit this place? Yeah. This was kind of in a flurry whenever you heard those sounds, so we can break out the arsenal and see what we can get here. Let's do it. We are getting ready to head down into the basement here. This is an area where people have a lot of experiences and even earlier on the walk through, Jason felt a really strong energy down here. Just the way that it was. It's really heavy down here. Wow, it's heavy. It's a different vibe. You know, every floor to me brings a different vibe. So uh, I'm gonna run the SLS and we're gonna see what we can capture down here. Yes, we are. Let's turn that hallway up. What was that? I heard that. What'd you hear? It sounded like a voice. What was that? What was that? I heard that. What'd you hear? Is there anybody down here? Any patients down here? If you need a nurse, can you call out? That's what I heard. Or, or, was that down towards you guys? Yeah, it's right in this room that I'm standing in front of with the incubator. It's right here. Hello there. My name is Jason. This is Ryan, Dave, Steve. Um, we're here for a little visit. Uh, could you tell us your name? If you want to, uh, you can come on down here and uh, maybe uh, chit chat with us for a little bit. What do you say? I'll even get out of the way for you. Wait, did someone just move? I did, this way. I just heard movement. It sounded like thumping upstairs. Yes, it did. Okay, well, it's not me. I'll even get out of the way for you. Wait, did someone just move? I'll even get out of the way for you. Wait, did someone just move? I know that. Something just flashed. I'm gonna run on this. I don't know, I just wanna make sure that if something happens, we can get the angle to get it, you know? Can you go stand in the middle of the hallway down there? Cold breeze, right hand side. You feel that? Yeah, I can. I can feel it over here. Mm -hmm. Please come as close as you like. We mean you no harm. We come here in respect. Down, maybe try the x ray rooms. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. 
You want to grab the SLS, Dave? Yeah. Is there a man here with us? You okay? Yeah, I thought I seen a flash of light behind there. It may have been me. Huh. You all right? Something just touched the back of my neck. Really? Yeah. I was filming you. There's nothing there. Nothing changed. You're filming. Finger. I felt like something tickled the back of my neck. Someone touching Dave? What'd you hear? It sounded like a yell or something. What was that? What'd you hear? <laughs> Move to the other x-ray room? Yeah. We're having a hard time finding you in here. It's very dark. If you don't want to speak with us, you gotta let us know somehow. Is there someone standing in that door over there? Are there any patients here ready for their x-rays? What was that? I heard that. What was that? What's that? You didn't hear that? What? That loud sound. No. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> what? What? This EDI has been in my pocket and it's got a rubber, like, Coat on, right? Yeah. I thought it was something tapping doing like this. Like something pushed on it this way. Hmm. And I was right here. Oh, shoot. I was right here uh, shooting, uh, filming Dave. Whoa. This is mapping something standing beside Steve. Really? To my left, towards the wall. I can't really tell. No, probably to your right. This way? Wherever your hand is pointing right now. That's exactly. That's the where size. it was. That was exactly, exactly Something's the Something's still there. Can you reach out and touch my hand? Oh. Oh, it's trying. Oh, it just disappeared. Oh. That's bizarre. Yeah. It's something, it's, I was like, just like this. Shooting Dave. I want to move my camera this way because he's got the SLS on me. Mm -hmm. And right here is the corner of the uh, EDI right here. Yeah, I can see it's it. Like something, it's like something going. I just tapped it a few times. Literally, and then and then you you turned around and said something. Dave panned the SLS your way, and there was something standing right there beside you. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, I'm gonna sit right here on the floor. I'm gonna go over here. Hearing anything weird in here, Jason? Pretty quiet. If you touch that device. It might light some lights up there. Nothing before or since that. That's weird. Yeah, because I didn't get a single figure either the whole time. It didn't map anything. Come on, I just saw you just a few minutes ago. You were standing right beside Steve. Can you show yourself right where you were at again? Nothing. <laughs> strange. I was hoping it would something would happen with that EDI too. Yeah. That's still pretty cool though, the two correlating things. You feel something tap on it when it's in your pocket and then all of a sudden something's standing there on the SLS. Yeah. Sometimes the SLS will map things like furniture door jams, things like that, but this is, I mean, this is a flat wall. Yeah. It's, There's no reason why it should be mapping anything right here. Plain white. Yeah. That was weird. That was.
Okay, so Steve and Ryan are gonna head down into the basement. We're splitting up. Steve and I are actually gonna head down to the morgue here now while Jason and Dave are on the fourth floor. And we're gonna do a Shepherd's Tone experiment. I know everybody loves that. Um, or hates it. But we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna set that up and then walk to the opposite end. That way you're not being deafened by the Shepherd's Tones. And we're gonna set Steve up and have him do an Estes Method session. Sounds like fun. Let's do it. Ready? Sure enough, let's do it. All right, so Steve is running the Estes method here in the morgue. We have him set up in the back of the room here. Whistle sound. I'm gonna be asking the questions and Steve is hopefully going to receive the answers. Who's the woman? Are you are you here with us? What's your name? Steve is gonna be in this back corner of the morgue and he has a camera on him. You are gonna be able to hear the voices that are coming through the spirit box because we're recording them as they're coming into Steve's earphones. But I'm not going to be able to hear the voices coming through here at this moment. I'm just going to ask the questions. Steve is blindfolded, so his sense of sight is going to be impaired to help him better focus on the voices coming through. So hopefully we can capture something. All right, so Jason and I are going to do a little bit of an experiment here. We're going to be setting up shepherd's tones with the EDI meter in here by itself. We're going to go to a completely different wing of the hospital here. And we're going to kind of leave this in here by itself. That way, the spirits can kind of have space and time to acclimate towards the sound and hopefully be able to communicate a little bit better with us. So we're going to head out. Ready? Sure enough. This is our first time in Williamson. We've never been to Williamson before. It's just Steve and I down here in the morgue. Why are you here? At the hospital on College Hill. Is the dead light on? Yes. Whoa, what was that? No, I just hear something. Can someone help us find surgery? I even read. Not sure what that was. Is there a man with us here now? Partial mail wish for word. What are you doing here in this old hospital? Why are you here? Out there anywhere? Something anywhere? Is it because you can't go anywhere? Are you stuck here? Hello? Hey. Hello? Are you stuck here in this hospital? No, my. I couldn't make that out. That was a male who was. Maybe we could help you. We may be able to help you find a way out. I was, I've been hearing sounds up above us. 
and Jason and Dave are all the way up on the fourth floor, which is, there's three floors in between us, so I should not be able to hear them at all. Um, Steve is still right back here. We've been picking up on a few voices, nothing really that intelligent yet. Possibly one that I think may have been intelligent, but we'll have to listen back to that on review. Oh, I would argue. Something argue. Male voice. We're not here to argue with you. There's a box right over here on the floor. Can you go over to that for me? Can you touch it? What's your doctor's name? A lot of people believe they see and hear you here in the hospital. If you're still here, if you're okay, can you give us a sign? here talking with us now. How did you end up here in this hospital? Another male voice I've heard before, I couldn't make it up. Who is it that's talking to Steve right now? Every day. Every day. Female voice. You're here every day? steps back here behind me. Sound like someone was walking up behind me. You know, Wiz couldn't make it out. Who's walking up behind me right now? How many of you are here? There's multiple voices coming through. How many of you are there? I think it was a male voice. How many of you are there right now? Hello, can anyone hear us? Hello, can anyone hear us? You can hear us, Dave and I would love to get to meet you. Can you tell us your name? Please. What happened to you? Why are you here? in the hospital in Williamson. If you would like to say anything or if you have a message for someone, I have a little recorder in my right hand. If you speak as loud and clearly as you can into this recorder, we should be able to hear your message. You can touch both of us if you'd like. If that's the way you need to get your message across. Well, I don't know what that was. Hey, you know, a little high-pitched voice. 
Do you hear the audio that Jason and Dave are playing right now? Can you hear that? There's a male voice right there. Do you like that people are starting to come visit you? Or do you want to be left alone? Could you make your way down here by us and make a sound? Some sort of anomaly just went down the hall. I'm not sure what it was. Who's here with us? We would love to see or hear from you. What did you see when you died? Be willing. Everyone always says you see a bright light. I thought I just heard something right here beside me. Sound like a voice. Everyone always says you see a bright light. I thought I just heard something. Sound like a voice. Not the insert. I'm not sure that it said insert or June 3rd or something like this. Is there anything you want to say before we leave? We're going to end this session here. There's something there. It was a, something like a young woman. I want to thank anyone who talked to us. So long. So long. That was a different meal voice than I heard. So long to you, my friend. So long to you. We'll be around. We're not leaving. We're just leaving this room. You're more than welcome to come talk to us. That was kind of interesting. Whoever's here with us, we're just setting a few things up that might help us uh, hear or see you better. We hope that that's okay. We mean no harm. We come with the utmost respect and compassion for you. My name's Steve. My name's Ryan. I'm Jason. And that's Dave down there at the end of the hall. Did that say Ryan? Are you able to remember where you're from? Beckley. What did that say? It clearly said Beckley. Beckley? Yeah. Thank you. Beckley is... Yeah, that was crystal clear. Not too far from here. We're all from West Virginia, too. Whoever's from Beckley, I'm from Fayetteville. Why were you here? There's something there. Mm -hmm. What's Jason and Dave doing out in the hallway? There's something there. Can you say that again? I couldn't hear you. Just to note, Jason is setting up the SLS camera. So we have a person from Beckley. Can anyone else tell us where you're from? City, city or state? I don't know. What is that? I don't know. That was... Were you in a car wreck? Do you want the other camera? Oh, God, I forgot all about that. I'm sorry. I forgot it was sitting there. I did too. (laughs) 
I say go away. Something. Do you say you do you want us to leave? Yes or no? I got a ring in my left ear. You do? Yeah. We need a def really loud yes or no. Do you want us to leave? And we'll leave if you want us to. We will give you your space if you want it. Did that say leave? No. It kind of sounded like it said see ya. Did it? Are we getting on your nerves? Do you want us to leave? Is there something hanging down right here? Something just brushed up against my face. I don't see anything. That was weird. Like I felt it hit me like right here on my eyebrow. Did someone just touch our friend Ryan? Come on out and say hello or goodbye. Are you aware that you've passed on? You've passed away. There's a response to that. Doesn't roll well in volume. Yeah, you've passed away. You're no longer living with us. Do you know that? If someone is at the end of that hallway down there, if you'd like to get your picture taken, we have a camera right here in the door. All you gotta do is just stand right there in that doorway and we'll take your picture for you. Well, I tell you what guys, it's about five o'clock in the morning. right it's coming up on uh getting close to the end of our shift here is there any uh, information that perhaps you'd like to share with us before we go uh -uh. did you hear that mm -hmm. all right guys so it's been a long day here at the Haunted Hospital on College Hill. This was a fun investigation. This is a really cool hospital and a really cool location. Whoa, just fell it again. Oh, cat ball, look, 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 look. Right on the window. Whoa, this is mapping something standing beside Steve. Real my left. I want to thank anyone who talked to us. So long. So long. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're new here and make sure to hit that like button down below. And if you are already subscribed, make sure that your bell notifications are turned to all because we want you to know whenever we upload a new video and we want you to get those notifications. So, and we're gonna pack up here and hit the road. Yes, come we'll out and support this place. That's right. Absolutely. Well, the best thing to do, if you folks want to come here and see for yourself, go to our website. Uh, we're on all the social media platforms. I hope you'll share this uh, on this video with folks. And uh, we are offering a variety of things from uh, the paranormal tours, flashlight tours, uh, even hosting weddings and so forth. It's a lot of, a lot of wonderful activities are coming to this place. And I invite you both as a mayor and someone involved in this to uh, come here and enjoy this hospital and everything it has to offer. Thank you.